Hello and welcome to Real Cheating Story. On any given day, infidelity can occur perhaps a hundred times or maybe even thousands, but it does happen. I suggest to all of you husbands out there to beware. We often deny it, thinking, it couldn't possibly happen to me. Yet, as sure as the sun rises in the east, a faithful wife may be sharing intimate moments with someone other than her husband. Yes, I said today. Do you doubt me? You'd be better off if you didn't. Look around you. Wake up and smell the coffee. Dig down deep into your own mind. If you had the chance to connect with a beautiful young woman, wouldn't you think about it? Before you answer, be honest with yourself. Can you really say for sure? Are you absolutely positive? Think of the thrill involved in the pursuit. Imagine the excitement of her presence, the way she makes you feel as you share those moments together. Picture the image of a young woman revealing her charms to you for the first time. Now, I bet at least half of you would entertain the thought. Admit it, no one else will ever know. You can explore that idea. She represents something new and intriguing, a fresh connection that draws you in. You're tempted, aren't you? Now you've hesitated, are you strong enough to resist? Do you love your spouse enough to overlook that alluring figure? Now ask yourself this, how much does your wife love you? Does your slightly overhanging belly appeal to her? How about your receding hairline, does it make her swoon? Think of those nights when you rolled away and fell asleep, leaving her feeling unfulfilled. Are you truly the romantic you envision yourself to be? Are women really so different from you? If you would consider straying, why wouldn't she? This is the hard question. Can you say with absolute certainty that she wouldn't seek affection elsewhere? I used to think I was among the few who loved my wife enough to be faithful. I believed she would always be true to me. I had been tempted many times by younger, more vibrant women, but I loved my wife enough to resist those distractions. I made a promise to love, honor, and cherish her, forsaking all others. This vow came from my heart, and I intended to carry it with me for life. Trina apparently did not see our marriage vows the same way I did. I loved her, and I was sure of that, wasn't I? The fact that she was involved with someone else came to me quite by accident and caused me to doubt everything in my little naive world. It was devastating to realize she was being unfaithful. I love Trina and would give her anything, anything but this. I am Danny, but everyone calls me Dan. Trina is my wife of 12 years. Our background is unremarkable. We met, dated, and then married. I work as a security system salesman, and Trina is a doctor with a private family practice. We own a nice home and lead a good life, at least we did until that Friday. My meeting that Friday afternoon with Mike, the security head of a large downtown mall, was wrapping up. We were signing the final contract for a video surveillance system upgrade that covered the indoor parking garage. As we discussed how well the cameras worked, he said, You've got to see this footage we have from the lower level. It's from Wednesday afternoon. He searched on the workstation and pulled up a clip on the monitor. Man, this new system is amazing, he said. We had no idea what we were missing. On the screen, you could see a car with two people inside. They were clearly connecting on a very intense level. The shot was from the passenger side of the car, where an animated woman was leaning toward a dark-haired man in the passenger seat. Now check this out, this feature is so cool, Mike said as the camera panned a little and zoomed in on the woman's face. She appeared to be completely lost in the moment, her eyes closed and biting her bottom lip. My heart stopped. You guessed it, there was Trina, right there in the mall parking lot, with another man in his car. Hey Mike, I have to get back to the office before it closes. Do you think you could email me this file? I want to show it to the guys. Hey man, no problem. I'll add a couple of other good ones I have too. Thanks, Mike. I'll see you later. The marriage I thought I had was now over, that was the only certainty in my life. I was sure of one thing, there are countless questions you can ask yourself in a situation like this, but the answers remain the same. I don't know why, I don't know who, I don't know how long, it's just uncertainty. 
Does it really matter? I had upheld my end of the bargain, while Trina hadn't. I found myself at home a little earlier than usual. I ordered a pizza and checked the mail. My happy life was changing before my eyes. I had resigned myself to the fact that my beautiful fairy tale marriage was over, at least as I had known it. But I would carry on, people all over the world experience tragedy every day, and they keep moving forward. The pizza arrived before Trina did, and I was half-heartedly eating when she walked in. Hi honey, how was your day? Oh, you ordered pizza. I thought maybe we could go out tonight. I don't feel like it, I replied, continuing to chew the tasteless food. Is something wrong? Yep. Do you want to talk about it? Nope. I left the kitchen and went to my den, closing the door behind me. A few minutes later, she knocked. Please, Danny, tell me what's wrong. We can work it out. I don't think so. Have I done something wrong to make you mad? You probably don't think so. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. Just leave me alone. Let her figure it out. She's intelligent. She's a doctor, for goodness sake. I wasn't going to argue about this. I simply didn't have the energy or the inclination. Apparently, Trina needed something I couldn't provide, and I wasn't going to open that can of worms. That night, I slept fitfully in my den. Some husbands would want confrontation, others would plan elaborate revenge. I didn't feel that way. I didn't even care who the other person was. I went to take a shower and then left the house to mow the yard. I don't enjoy yard work, but I stayed at it most of the day. Trina came out and asked if I wanted some lunch, and I just shook my head. The hard work in the sun had been good for me, it gave me time to think. I reviewed our life together. Had I done something wrong? From my perspective, I had met all her needs, emotional, financial, and otherwise. I could only conclude that this was Trina's issue to face on her own. The marriage was hers to fix or to let go. I wasn't going to run away, and I wasn't going to fight with her. I was in the shower after my hard day when I felt her hands on my back. She reached around and took my hand in hers, asking, Are you going to tell me what's bothering you? She got no reaction from me at all, and I'm sure that upset her. The next day, I cleared the clutter from the spare bedroom and moved in there. I went to work and came home to my new room, that became my routine. Trina continued to ask me to talk to her, but I refused. I still love my wife, you can't just turn that off. But each day that passed, I felt a little more detached from life. I was hurt by her actions, and Trina could sense it. She had the key to help us, but I guess her conscience wouldn't let her admit it. For weeks, we lived like strangers in our own home, just going through the motions in silence, no love as before. On a bright, sunny Saturday, she approached me and asked, Dan, can we set this aside for a moment and talk? Why haven't you figured it out yet? I don't know why you're upset with me, but I can't take it any longer. I must have done something, and you won't tell me what it is. Please help me. What you did was without consideration for me. This is your issue, not mine, I replied calmly. At that moment, I could see a realization dawn on her face. The color drained from her features as she burst into tears and ran to her bedroom. Well, the truth is out now. I was sure she realized I had discovered her secret. She spent the entire day in her bedroom crying. I didn't attempt to comfort her, after all, I wasn't the cause of her pain. The fact that she now understood why I was acting differently hadn't changed anything. I felt no responsibility for the rift between us, she had broken our vows. Some might say it takes two to cause a relationship to falter, perhaps I had done something to contribute to her choices. You may be entitled to your opinion, but I have no reason to believe that. Trina and I had always discussed our relationship honestly, and she knew my views on commitment and trust. The next morning, Trina looked worse than I had ever seen her, but truthfully, I didn't care. I hoped she felt as bad as she looked, she should experience some of the pain I had endured. Dan, will you talk to me now? She asked softly. How are you this morning? 
How are your parents? I haven't heard from them for a while. What do you think about Italian for dinner tonight? Please, Dan, don't do this. Please tell me what you're going to do. Are we done? Can you forgive me? I'm not going to do anything, I replied. I don't understand. Tell me what to do. What do you want? No, Trina, that's not how this works. You disrupted our marriage, and now you must decide what to do with it. You didn't consider me when you made those choices, you made that decision on your own. Now you need to decide what to do about our marriage by yourself, I said coldly. Don't you mean our marriage? No, Trina, it stopped being ours when you chose to be with someone else. We had a commitment to remain faithful to each other. You didn't consult me about it or seek to renegotiate the terms. I stuck to our agreement, and you didn't. This is your decision alone, I replied with no emotion. How can you be so cold? Do you hate me that much? She asked, tears welling in her eyes as she curled into herself. No, Trina. I promise to love and honor you till death do us part. I will love you and remain true to my vows, whether together or apart, even if we divorce. The reality was finally sinking in for her. She was starting to see the consequences of her actions. Trina spent the rest of the day alone, deep in thought. Over the past few weeks since I discovered her infidelity, my emotions had dulled to the point that I barely cared about anything. I was operating on autopilot, eating only because it was mealtime and working because that was my routine. Each day, I slept poorly, doing nothing out of desire or need, only out of habit. I wondered where I would be in a week or a month. That evening, Trina came to my bed, sitting lightly on the edge. Dan, are you awake? What do you want, Trina? I'm trying to sleep. I want to tell you how sorry I am. Yeah, well, I'm sorry too. Now everything is all better, right? Just let me get some sleep. Unless you have a way of erasing the memory of what happened. Please, Dan, let me explain. Stop, Trina. I have one question. Is there any reason this is my fault? Did I not love you the way you wanted? Did I not pay enough attention to you? Was I not a good partner? No, Dan, you were everything I ever wanted. I did nothing to push you away. Then, Trina, I don't need an explanation. The only thing I need to know is what you plan to do next. Are you leaving me? No, Dan. I never want to leave you. You're my whole life. I'll do whatever it takes to keep us together forever. Then fix it, Trina. Make it better. Make the hurt go away. I wish I could, with all my heart. I just don't know how. If you've been following along, you might think I don't care about what Trina does behind my back. I know I said I wouldn't accept lies or deception, and if Trina decides to repair our marriage, it has to meet my standards. I'd rather be without her than without trust. My gut feeling was that Trina wanted to save our marriage, but her challenge would be to convince me that her actions were truly over. She wouldn't have an easy time of it. I wouldn't play the fool, my trust in her had eroded so much that if she told me the sky was blue, I'd have to go check. Trina appeared determined to mend what was broken. She repeatedly expressed her remorse, but I asked myself if she was sorry for getting caught or for the actions themselves. Her next response disturbed me, not for what she did, but because it hadn't occurred to her to check for any health concerns. She showed me the report and said, I looked into it before you read it. Should I get tested? She hesitated. It isn't really necessary, but I will if you want. All my tests were negative, and we only were together that one time. You and I haven't been intimate since then. I realized that her lapse hadn't been ongoing. It was a one-time mistake, but a mistake nonetheless. I wasn't sure if I could ever forgive her, but I knew I would give her the chance to regain my love and trust. We were both uncertain about our path forward but I had to give Trina credit, she was trying. Our home life remained tense and distant, and we didn't seem to make any progress for the next week. One evening, the phone rang, and Trina took the call. She sounded agitated, 
and when the conversation ended, she approached me in tears. Dan, please. I know I'm not your favorite person right now, but I need a favor from you. What is it, Trina? What's wrong? It was my mom. She told me Grandad is in the hospital. What do you need me to do? I know it's asking a lot right now, but will you go with me to see him? Mom said he may only have a few days left. I want you with me when I see him for the last time. Of course I'll go. You shouldn't even have to ask. Trina made the arrangements, and we flew out the next day. I really did like Bill, Trina's grandfather. He was one of the good guys. He had made a fortune in construction in the 70s and 80s, but you would never guess it from the way he acted. He was as down-to-earth as they come. We arrived at Trina's parents' home late in the evening. They filled us in on Bill's condition, and it was decided we would see him in the morning. This would be the first time Trina and I would sleep in the same room in weeks. Given the circumstances, we decided not to tell her parents about our issues at that time. Getting ready for bed that night was awkward. We didn't speak as we went through our nightly routines. We both slipped into bed a little after 11 o'clock. It must have been an hour before Trina asked if I was awake. Yeah, I can't sleep either. Dan, I've missed you so much. I hardly sleep anymore without you there. I know it's hard not having the one you love nearby. Does that mean you still love me? Of course I do, but I can't forget what happened. Do you think there's a chance we can make it through this? I hope so, Trina, but it's really up to you. You keep telling me that, but it doesn't seem fair. You're not helping. Was it fair to me when you were with someone else? You didn't need my help then, did you? I know you're right, but I'm scared. I'm scared I won't be able to do it. I just don't know how to make it right. Trina, please just try to get some sleep. The important thing now is Bill. Okay, but you're wrong about one thing. The most important thing to me is you. Do you think you could do me one more favor? What is it? Could you hold me tonight? I lifted my arm, and Trina melted against me. She held on until we woke the next morning. We went to the hospital at 8 that morning. On the way, Trina asked her mother if we could see Bill alone for a while. Her mother seemed confused but agreed. Upon our arrival, Bill was awake. All right, what's going on, were the first words out of his mouth. Nothing, we just wanted to see you, Trina said. Don't try to pull a fast one on me, Trina. I may be unwell, but I'm not blind. I was shocked when she told him the whole story. In 15 minutes, Bill knew as much as I did. Well, that's quite a story. So what happens next? Can you forgive her, Dan, or are you going to walk away? Well, I haven't decided yet. Trina, honey, would you go get me some water or something? I need to talk to your husband alone for a few minutes. Okay, let's get to this. I don't have the time to hold your hand through this. I need to know, do you love her? Yes, sir, I do. Well then, what's the hold up? Tell her you love her, forgive the past, and move on with your lives. It's not that simple. Yes, it is. Everyone tries to make it complicated these days. The truth is, you don't trust her. She made a mistake, and it upset you. Now you think she'll do it again. Has she ever lied to you? I doubt it. Then what's the issue? Just ask her straight up if she will do it again. Trust me, she won't lie to you. She doesn't have it in her. I wish it were that easy. In my day, we did business with a handshake. We trusted each other's word. If you can't trust her word, get it in writing. Talk to your lawyer if you have to. Dan, you two are good for each other. Don't do anything foolish now. Could you send Trina back in so I can talk to her? I shook Bill's hand and wished him well. I found Trina and led her back to Bill's room. I sat alone in the waiting room, contemplating everything. Bill was being straightforward, and maybe it was that simple. I was questioning my resolve, 
Could I truly bring myself to forgive and move forward? Bill passed away that night, and I knew he would be missed. I called my boss to let him know it would be a few more days until I could return, as we were staying for the funeral. In bed those nights with Trina, I felt as close to her as I ever had. She needed me, and I was there for her. Bill's passing was taking its toll on her. I went home on Sunday, while Trina stayed to help her mother. For the first time, I was alone in my house. It felt different, I had always known Trina would return from her trips, but now I was uncertain. Was this what my life was to become? I feared life without my wife, but I also knew that without trust, our marriage wouldn't survive. I worked long hours to avoid our lonely home. I had just pulled into my driveway after a long day when my neighbor George from across the street waved and walked over to me. George is a tall, surfer-type guy, a few years older than me, with long, shaggy hair. You've probably met him or at least one of his twin brothers. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Hey, George. Going fine. Uh, Trina told Lissa you guys were having some issues. You going to be okay? Yeah, well, we're working it out. I just wanted to say I felt bad about everything, you know? Yeah, George, thanks for your concern. I think we'll be alright. As I went into the house, I wondered what that was all about. George wasn't usually the type to gossip. Trina didn't talk to George and his wife Melissa unless she really needed to, so I brushed it off as neighborhood chatter. I needed to eat, so I let it slide. Being alone for a few days had led me to conclude that I really had to decide my fate. I couldn't continue like this indefinitely. I needed to either forgive her or move on. Bill had certainly given me a lot to think about. Trina called later that evening to let me know she'd be home on Friday. Thursday was slow in the office, and my work was up to date from all the extra hours I had put in. Around 4 o'clock, as I was shutting down for the day, Rich, one of the other salesmen, came to my office and asked if I wanted to grab a beer after work. With no reason to go home, I agreed. At the corner pub, we sat and talked about the usual things, golf, work, and Rich's plans for a new car. When the small talk slowed, Rich jumped in with both feet. Dan, we've known each other for a long time now. Something's bothering you, and it might help to get it off your chest. I don't really want to talk about it, Rich. The only thing you won't talk about with me is Trina. Is that why you're acting like someone spoiled your day? Yeah, I guess I don't hide it very well. What happened? Let's just say I can't trust her anymore. Look, Dan, if you don't trust her, then you need to reconsider things. You can't live your life looking over your shoulder. Believe me, I've been there. I finished my beer and told Rich I'd see him tomorrow. I felt frustrated, this wasn't getting any easier. First Bill, now Rich, what about Trina? How is she going to convince me to stay with her? I didn't sleep well that night, my mind racing with thoughts of Trina and her past actions, the look on her face when she was happy with someone else, a look I hadn't seen in so long. I picked up Trina at the airport in the afternoon. She seemed pleased to see me and hugged me, but the tension was still palpable. We made small talk about her family and the flight. As we drove home, I wanted to ask her if she had come to any conclusions regarding our issues, but she looked exhausted, so I decided to wait. The next morning, Trina was up early and had breakfast ready when I came downstairs. We ate slowly, and I noticed she seemed different, calmer and more relaxed. I wondered where we were headed. Had she given up? Would she tell me it was over? I finally asked, Trina, have you worked it out yet? I think so, Dan, but could we talk about it tonight after dinner? I have a lot to do today. I made myself scarce for the day, running errands and doing small tasks to keep busy. Time felt different, minutes seemed like hours. That evening felt like a first date, exciting but uncertain. Trina was beautiful, she had her hair and nails done that day and was dressed to impress. I hoped the evening wouldn't be too daunting. She made my favorite dinner, and I sensed something significant was about to happen. 
After dinner, we retired to the living room to talk. Dan, I want you to know how truly sorry I am. I know I have hurt you terribly. You don't want explanations, so I won't go into that now, she paused, taking a breath. What you've made me realize is that I can't go on without you. I need you in my life. By making me responsible for my actions, I had to grow up. When we visited Bill in the hospital, he gave me some advice. What was it? We talked about the same things he and you discussed about truth and trust. I can see now why I had to do this on my own. This is my responsibility, and it's entirely my fault. She took another breath, visibly emotional. When you left after the funeral, I know this is going to sound mixed up, so please bear with me. Anyway, we went to Bill's attorney to settle the estate. I'll just say it, Bill left us a lot of money. What are you saying, Trina? Bill left us a little over $9 million. That's great, Trina, but how does this solve our problems? Dan, I thought you'd be more excited. Aren't you happy? Yeah, Trina, I'm happy for you. Dan, when you talked to Bill, did he suggest seeing a lawyer if you couldn't trust me? Yes, he did. He said to get it in writing if I couldn't trust your word. She handed me some papers. Well, that's what I did, Dan. I met with Bill's attorney after the will was read. I arranged it so if you caught me being unfaithful and we split up, you would get all the money. What? Why would you do that? To prove to you that you can trust me. It would be a penalty if I did anything to jeopardize our relationship. It's the only way I could think of to show I want to be with you. Trina, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just forgive me, please. I realized I would be miserable without her. She had truly tried to make amends. This unexpected gesture wasn't what I had expected, but at least in spirit, she had done what I had asked. Time would tell if it was enough. She approached me with hopeful eyes and I don't know what came over me, but I told her we would give it a try. We hugged, and she kissed me. Trina took my hand and led me to our bedroom. I could see this was part of her plan all along. As she undressed, I noticed the new lingerie she wore. I guessed she had bought it that day, knowing we might be intimate tonight. It had been so long for us, we hadn't connected like that in months. I told her I still needed time to feel close again. The memories of her past actions were still fresh in my mind. She started to cry, but I remained unmoved. What did she expect? That she could bring me news of a large inheritance and I would just forget everything? We understood each other and lay beside each other in silence. At breakfast the next morning, we held hands and talked. Trina was glowing and excited, speaking to me like a long-lost friend. I could barely get a word in. Dan, I've missed you. I'm so happy to have you back. I still can't express how sorry I am. Please believe me, it was only the one time with George. After my nurse caught us in my office that day, she quit. I just knew she would tell you. I thought I had problems before, but now they seemed magnified. Trina had a way of digging herself deeper with her words. Yesterday, I was a 35-year-old man viewing life through rose-colored glasses, believing in love and commitment. I had made vows to remain true, and I intended to keep them. I lived in a world where there were no lies or secrets between lovers, trust was absolute, and marriage was for life. Well, who am I today? I'm certainly not that man anymore. My heart felt shattered, replaced by something cold and distant. The person I was yesterday seemed to have vanished, as if he had been taken away. My wife, Trina, had caused that change. She had the chance to heal the wounds she inflicted, but instead, she chose to betray my trust. After some time, I realized she wasn't making any real progress in mending our relationship. She eventually proposed a plan involving her inheritance from her late grandfather. I had hoped for a resolution, but in a moment of weakness, I forgave her. True to form, my ever-talkative wife tried to explain her lapse and admitted to a different affair. It seemed there were more than one. I had learned about at least two of her affairs, 
but she was unaware that I knew. I'm not the type of man driven by greed, or at least I wasn't. Even now, the wealth isn't the main issue, it's the fact that Trina put everything on the line to assure me of her faithfulness. I had given so much to her, but I intended to give no more. She had taken all the love I had and left me feeling empty. As the days passed since discovering my wife's betrayals, I became increasingly despondent. Life held little value anymore, and I stayed with her out of habit. I felt myself sliding downward, and Trina noticed. Honey, what's the matter? Aren't you feeling well? She asked, placing her hand on my cheek. I'm fine, Trina. It's this whole messed up marriage that feels sick. Dan, I thought we were okay. What's wrong? You said you'd forgiven me. Did you change your mind? Trina, a lot of things have changed. I once thought you loved me, but I see now I was mistaken. Dead wrong. But I do love you. Save it, Trina. It won't work anymore. You played me for a fool. What do you gain from treating me this way? Is it some sort of game? Do you enjoy hurting me? You have what you want, a career, money. Why not just leave if you don't love me? So, you know about the others. I wonder how long it would take you to find out, she replied coldly. Trina, you told me, but that doesn't explain why. Be honest for once. Why did you do it? Why was it important for you to toy with my feelings? Trina got up and walked a few steps before turning back. You're so difficult, Dan, she said before leaving the room. As I mentioned before, Trina was smart, perhaps too smart. There was something more to all of this than I could comprehend at the moment. I needed a distraction to take my mind off Trina and what she had done to me, even if just for a few hours. I grabbed my jacket and was heading for the door when Trina unexpectedly approached me. She was intense, throwing herself against me and burying her face in my neck, her lips brushing as she spoke. Look, Dan, I'm sorry about what I said before. You know I didn't mean it, it was just in the heat of the moment. Please forgive me. It won't happen again. Can't we forget all of this and get back to the way things used to be? How are you going to do that, Trina? Tell me how you plan to make this right. You can't erase what happened. What's done is done. You took something important from me, and that can't be changed. You stained it, Trina. No, there's no way we will ever be the same. Not now, not ever. I turned and walked out the door, standing on my front porch, staring out at the world. Where was I going, and how was I going to get there from here? I decided to walk instead of drive. I could easily run into someone without realizing it in the dark mood I was in. Oh great, what does George want now? I thought as he angled across the street toward me. I kept my eyes focused ahead, but it was clear we would cross paths. I knew that if he got close enough, I wouldn't hold back. I raised my hand to wave him off, but he kept coming closer. George, I'll give you one chance to walk away, I said. He didn't stop. One more step, and I swear I will make you regret it, I warned again. Look, man, there's no need to get hostile. I just want. I threw a powerful punch from deep within me, lifting him clean off his feet and sending him crashing to the pavement. My fist hurt like hell, but the satisfaction I felt was worth it. What the hell did you do that for, he moaned. George, are you really that clueless? You think I wouldn't be upset after what you did? Hey, she said you were okay with it. She was the one who made the first move on me, man, he stammered. Before he could say anything else, I kicked him hard. He doubled over, trying to catch his breath. Tell me, would you be okay with it if I went after Lisa? How about it, dude? Would that be fine with you? I said, adopting a mocking tone. Just leave Lisa out of this. She doesn't know, does she? Well, pal, she will. I'm going to tell her everything, and let's see if she's okay with it too. I started to walk away when I heard George mutter, if you weren't having issues, maybe she wouldn't have to look elsewhere. 
I turned back and grabbed him by his long, messy hair. My fist connected with him so hard that it felt like I hit him in the gut. George dropped to his knees, clearly overwhelmed, as I walked down the street. I chuckled at the thought of Melissa finding out about George's surfboards. She was going to lose it when I told her. Hey, wait a minute. What did George just say about me? I thought. What was that supposed to mean? I hadn't had any medical procedure like that. There was no way. The next afternoon, I found myself sitting in my urologist's office, waiting for a sperm count test. It didn't change anything for Trina and me anymore, but I wanted to know what George was talking about. We had decided to postpone having children until Trina's career was firmly established, even if that meant waiting until later in life. We were okay with that. The nurse called me to come back to the exam room. I recognized her as someone who had once worked with Trina. We went through the usual routine, height, weight, blood pressure, and temperature. Donna, the nurse, gave me one of those paper gowns and told me the doctor would be in soon. When the doctor finally got to me, I had been standing there for half an hour or more, which was a bit unsettling. It felt odd to have the doctor so close during the examination, especially when he put on gloves. Donna didn't make it any easier, she would lick her lips while maintaining eye contact after every glance down. After his exam, the doctor slid his stool back and asked Donna to assist with the sample. I hadn't even considered that aspect, I know that sounds silly, but it hadn't crossed my mind how they conducted the test. She handed me a cup and told me she would need a sample. It felt awkward standing there with that little cup, knowing Donna, someone I had known for years, would be just outside the door. As she turned to go to a cabinet, I couldn't help but notice her posture, which gave me an unintended view. She turned back and handed me a magazine with a smirk, saying, I think this one will help. After she left, I thought I should have chosen a different doctor where no one knew me. It might have made this less embarrassing. I was in no mood for this, and thoughts of Trina with other men weren't helping my focus. I had been in the exam room for quite a while when the door opened slightly. Dan, are you okay? Are we having a little problem? Donna asked. Yeah, sort of, I replied sheepishly. Donna entered the room and closed the door, locking it behind her. Donna, I said with astonishment, I don't think this is right. What if someone were to? I was still talking when she removed her top. She pulled the small stool close just like the doctor had done. This time, the feeling was quite different and not at all unpleasant. Donna was doing what I hadn't expected, and it felt surprisingly good. I thought I would feel shame or guilt, but instead, I felt no remorse at all. I knew what I did was wrong, but in that moment, I didn't care. Half undressed, Donna sat next to me on the exam table and reached for my hand. We sat quietly for a moment. I spoke first. That was pretty amazing. I hope that isn't part of your job description. What if someone had walked in? They're all gone. We're the only two left in the building, she said. So you were just trying to get rid of me, huh? I joked. Yes and no. I was kind of hoping that. I hesitated. I would really like to, but I have some issues to work through first. Well then. Let's get out of this place, and you can buy me a drink. I think a good conversation deserves at least one beer, and I'm a good listener if you twist my arm, I quipped. She reached under the gown and squeezed my hand playfully. It turned out that Donna was an excellent listener, and she sat patiently as I shared my story of betrayal. One beer turned into two, and I insisted she join me for dinner. I felt the weight of the world lift from my shoulders. It turned out I really needed to talk. Hours passed too quickly, and soon I found myself at Donna's doorstep, wishing for more time. I kissed her gently and felt her respond, but I flinched first. I thanked Donna for a wonderful evening and promised to call. There was no doubt in my mind that I would keep that promise. Trina was waiting for me when I got home. As I walked toward my study, she turned on the charm. Dan, honey. Could we sit down and talk for a while? Trina, what's the point? Haven't we been over this enough? 
until you're ready to give me the real reason you felt it necessary to step outside our marriage. I have nothing left to say, she replied. Danny, she started, but then the tears came. I went into the kitchen, grabbed a paper towel, and tossed it to her. On my way back, I felt her tears were genuine, but I had no desire to deal with it right then. I walked to my den. I love you, Danny, she called out, her voice carrying through the slamming door. Try as I might, sleep wouldn't come. Thoughts whirled through my head. What did I do to deserve this? Was Trina tired of me? That made no sense, she was clear with her last words to me. I was relieved she didn't hate me, but if she could do this while loving me, imagine the pain she could inflict if she felt differently. What about what George had said? Why the secrecy and rush to have a baby now? If she was trying to conceive. Ah, this was all absurd. Surely she would talk to me about it. How could George possibly know anything? I must watch too much TV to think this was a conspiracy. She was cheating on me, pure and simple. That had to be the answer. Still, the question remained, why? All I had from that night's confusion were bloodshot eyes. I had no clear vision of what was happening or where my life was headed. I thought about walking away and leaving it all behind, but that wasn't me. I had to know what went wrong, and that became my mission. The night wasn't a total loss, I realized that some people can't help but talk. If you let them go on long enough, they'll reveal what you want to know. I considered this a weakness, one I would try to exploit if given the chance. I missed Bill. While I thought his last piece of advice was pure, he also had a lot of common sense, something I hadn't seen much of lately, myself included. I remembered my time in the doctor's office. I shouldn't have let things go as far as they did with Donna. I could have, should have stopped it, but I didn't. I made my usual rounds that day on autopilot. The last call of the day would be with my old buddy Mike. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Mike greeted me. Not too shabby. Just dropping by to see if you're ready to get rid of all that outdated equipment and finally buy some real gear. You wish. If I remember right, you're the one who sold me that old stuff. Okay, you got me there. Say, Mike, are you still keeping an eye on your customers? That last DVD was pretty interesting. Any more you want to share? I asked. His ears perked up. Yeah, I've got a few more. Look, Mike, I'll be straight with you. We've known each other for quite a while. Remember that video you showed me last time I was here? Yeah, who could forget her? Well, I don't know how to say this, but that was my wife in that video. I was wondering if you had any more recent footage of her. You're kidding me, man. I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, it's not your fault. I'm just looking for a little more evidence to confront her, you know? I'll do anything I can to help. It looks like she's becoming a regular. I left a new, high-end camera with Mike. He promised to let me know if he caught Trina in the act. I actually hoped it had been the only time. I wanted to be wrong. I really did. When I got home, I found the note Trina had left me. The thought that she had run out on me flashed through my mind before I had a chance to read it. The note said she was going home to see her parents for a few days. She wanted to give me some space. Today was Tuesday, and she would be home Sunday. I stayed in the office the next day to get caught up on reports. It was busy work that didn't require much concentration. I received a couple of calls that day. The first was from my urologist, asking me to come by for my test results. The other turned out to be more interesting. It was from Trina's grandmother. After some small talk, she got straight to the point. Daniel, what is going on between you two? Don't bother denying it. I know something is up. Bess, you cut right to the chase, don't you? Look, if you want to know, you'll have to ask Trina. Don't you think I haven't? But, Daniel, she's lying to me. If I were to believe her, everything is just fine between you two, but I know better. I'm sorry, B, but things are complicated. You'll have to ask Trina, 
I can't say anything more. Listen, young man, with Bill gone, I'm the head of this family. I didn't ask for this, but it's my responsibility. There's a lot at stake here, and I have to make certain that the terms of Bill's will are carried out to the letter. There's a lot of money on the line. Best, nine million? I mean, that's not the important thing here. If all this means to her is money, then she can keep it. Surely you're joking. Nine million is just a drop in the bucket. The terms of the trust fund are very specific. You are part of this family now, and you must uphold your end. I was more confused than ever. Now? Trust fund? What trust fund? I asked Bess. I needed to figure out what she was talking about before I said something I might regret. I had to get a copy of Bill's last will and testament. I left work a little after 4 p.m. and stopped in to get my test results. The news wasn't good, my doctor said my sperm count was nearly non-existent. He added that my last test results were about the same. Did you catch that last test? What last test? I asked. Something felt off. I didn't take time to dwell on the news. I doubted I'd ever need that aspect of my life again. Why would Trina have my sperm tested? I was supposed to be finding answers, but the questions were piling up. I chatted with Donna before I left the office and reminded her that I would call soon. With the house to myself, I opened a can of soup and burned a couple of grilled cheese sandwiches for dinner. After a couple of bites, I decided to switch to beer instead. With the house empty, I searched all the obvious places for Bill's will and then got more systematic, looking room by room. I came up empty-handed. The one thing I found was the key to our safety deposit box. Now I had to remember which bank the key fit. At lunch the next day, I found myself in the bank lobby. If I opened the box and found more questions, they'd probably think I was losing it. Well, surprise surprise, the will was there, along with a few other interesting documents. The will was huge, I would need expert help to go through it. I was lucky enough to find a law firm that handled both probate law and divorces. I wanted to be prepared because I could see no way to salvage our once perfect marriage. I discussed the facts I knew and answered all the questions I could. That night, after another satisfying meal of beer, I sat back in my easy chair and started to read Trina's old journals that I'd found in the safety deposit box. After browsing a few pages of random thoughts, I came to a page that laid bare the truth about Trina and my relationship. It was all there in black and white, and I could hardly wait to show this to my lawyer. Saturday was a somber day as I packed up everything I'd accumulated over the last 12 years. I left behind anything that reminded me of Trina, that part of my life was over. It felt like a collection of lies and deceit. I spent 12 years investing everything I had into a marriage that was driven by greed and an insatiable desire for wealth. Trina had known all along about the trust fund her grandmother mentioned the other day. The exact amount was unclear, but it was sure to total in the hundreds of millions. The nine million was merely a stipend, spending money until the trust was fulfilled. Trina would inherit the entire sum when the conditions were met. The will would clarify the terms, but the crux of it was that Bill, although he loved Trina, didn't trust her. He ensured she would establish herself before she received the ultimate reward, a long and happy marriage, a career, and a child. Her journal revealed a darker side of my once beloved wife. She intended to claim the money, and I would be left behind. The plan had begun even before we met, and by the looks of things lately, she was intent on following through. As expected, Sunday afternoon brought a flurry of phone calls. I turned off my cell phone, there was nothing I wanted to hear. I hadn't left a note, choosing instead to deal with my emotions privately. I did cry, it hurt. I had sensed the end coming for a while, but I wasn't nearly as prepared as I thought I would be. Many questions were answered, Trina's overwhelming desire to have a child explained the affairs. Clearly, when she couldn't conceive with me, she sought out multiple lovers. Why was I the one caught in the middle? I was just in the right place at the right time. Trina needed a husband to meet the terms of the will. 
I considered calling in sick the next day but decided I'd had enough of self-pity. I set an appointment with my attorney and planned to meet him after lunch. I spent most of the morning half expecting to see Trina, but it wasn't her who showed up. Instead, it was Trina's father, Frank. Frank reminded me of a thin piece of plywood, stiff and unyielding. I wasn't in the mood for any nonsense, so I put my feet up on my desk to signal my disinterest. What brings you by today, Frank? Are you looking to improve security around your house, or is this a social call? Dan, I think we both know why I'm here. Trina would like to meet with you before you do anything unwise. Too late, Frank. I've already done something unwise about 12 years ago. Dan, you're out of your element here. It would be in your best interest to cooperate. Can I be frank, Frank? No, I guess you've already done that. Trina was right, you're quite the character. That's the second time in just over a week someone has said that to me. You better leave while you still can. Tell Trina that I'll talk when I'm ready. This isn't her show anymore. Frank left in a huff, and I hoped he got the message, though I doubted Trina would. I arrived at my lawyer's office at one o'clock with Trina's journal under my arm. This was turning into quite the situation. There were three attorneys present. The probate lawyer began explaining the terms of the trust. Trina had to be married by her 24th birthday, and the marriage had to last at least one day past her 36th, which was 18 months away. There was to be one child born during the marriage, and no specifics were given regarding the father. The last requirement was for her to have an established career with enough income to support a family. My divorce attorney was busy reading Trina's journal while we discussed the will. Another important detail was the amount of the trust, which was approximately $450 million, depending on daily interest rates. Bill had done quite well for himself. A lot of ideas and options were discussed that day. It was well after seven that evening when I walked out, shaking my head. Over the next couple of months, Trina was persistent. She begged and pleaded for me to see the big picture. I saw a lot more than she realized. She had no idea what her greed was doing to her, but she soon would. Her day of reckoning was on the horizon. I hadn't been sitting idle this whole time, just most of it. My buddy Mike had sent me some very incriminating videos of Trina that I could use in the civil case against her. I intended to address the issue of the money Trina had offered to ensure she would never lie or cheat again. The videos would clearly support my claim. I felt confident going into the meeting with Trina, and I was sure she felt the same. We were to meet on my turf, or rather, my lawyers. They were with me, but they had all been convinced over the last 60 days that I was losing my mind. I wasn't too sure that I wasn't, but I had something to prove, at least to myself. It was my meeting, I set the terms and the time. I sat at the head of the table with my legal team around me, ready to confront the situation. Trina's lawyers entered first, followed by her parents, and finally, Trina herself. She was obviously pregnant, and that fact didn't go unnoticed. It only served to strengthen my resolve and reaffirm what a scheming person my soon-to-be ex-wife was. One of Trina's lawyers started the meeting by saying they had a very generous offer if I would postpone the divorce proceedings. I got up and headed for the door. It had been agreed that this was a meeting between Trina and me, and I wasn't going to listen to anyone else at that table. My instructions were clear on this point. As I left the building, my attorneys outlined the rules for the next meeting. The one difference was that the man who had spoken would not be invited back. The delay didn't really matter, we had all expected it. Still, the arrogance annoyed me. I felt things might go smoother as we took our seats at the table. Trina's team entered as before, but this time there was one exception. Good, they were paying attention now. Maybe we could get this mess settled. Trina started, Dan, I hope you'll reconsider. As you can see, we're going to have a baby. Nice try, Trina. What else do you have? Well, if you're still determined to go ahead with the divorce, I'm prepared to make you an offer. If you postpone it for a while. You mean about 16 months? I see you understand the seriousness of the situation. 
I am willing to offer $3 million for each year of our marriage, which would total 14 years at the time of separation. Nah, I had something different in mind, more like 50-50. You can't be serious. Okay, have it your way, 60 40ths. There's no way. All right, final offer, 80 20ths. Take it or leave it. I might be willing to give you 20. No, sweetheart. It's 80 for me and 20 for you, I said with a straight face. Trina looked like she was about to explode. Now you have it your way. Get your divorce. My lawyers will tie you up in court so long that it won't matter. I don't want a divorce. This is even better, I said as I slid the annulment across the table that stated we were never married. Her other lawyer stood up, red in the face. You can't do this. I already have, with the help of Trina and her journals. Does the word fraud mean anything to you? It meant a lot to the judge who granted the annulment. Everyone looked at Trina as she sunk down in her chair. I wondered how many people had ever seen someone lose $459 million in the blink of an eye. Most would think it a sad sight, but for me, it was a relief. You want to know the best part? It wasn't the money. I would end up with next to nothing after taxes and attorney fees anyway. What made it worthwhile was that I didn't have to dwell on what once was because it never existed. I was now free of my wedding vows. The marriage had never occurred in the eyes of the law. By the way, does anyone have Donna's phone number handy? I'd like to give her a call. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.